Hi, I'm Chris Nelson, Pratt Community College. Uh, I'm the ins main instructor for Information Network Technology. And we offer several programs here to, to support the, the needs that are growing more and more in the country. So just a little bit about me. I started out many years ago as a software consultant right out of college and traveled around the United States and Canada doing consulting work for, uh, for that firm. Uh, learned lots of things, met lots of people, and uh, had a pretty fun life. But I like to do things on my own and uh, started a few businesses, ended up moving out of the corporate world, coming to Pratt. We have uh, made and sold a few businesses along the way. And my last position, I was the, uh, started out as IT director and then worked my way up to a lot more responsibilities for an oil and gas company in this area. So um, I've done a lot of things and uh, I'm enjoying this role as instructor. So I get to share my passion with, of technology with lots of young people who, who uh, want to find their path in life. So anyway, that's just a little bit about me, but what we do in INT here is we focus on CompTIA and we're a CompTIA Academy, which uh, has a number of certifications available for people who are into technology. Uh, one of the most important things I think in regards to doing hands-on technical activities and a career is you have to like puzzles. We must like puzzles because there's always something changing. There's always an update, there's always firmware change, hardware goes out, we have things to do. So this track actually helps take you through those roles and helps you find your best fit. So, a plus networking, security, server, Linux. We have lots of things that we can that we support here, and then we have other stuff along the side that's a little more fun, like game theory, which in our world is actually game development and learning how to work with blueprints and actually building small video games. Um, we do some project development because po most project management, regardless of what career you choose, you have to deal with that. You need, must learn to manage budgets and time and, and that type of thing. And we also focus on uh, some programming. We spend time, there are several classes in Visual Basic and C Sharp. So those help support some of our other items like uh, the game development and they play well together. So CompTIA is a large nonprofit that is recognized worldwide. Okay. They are in 120 countries. So if you have a certification from CompTIA, people know what that means. A plus in the United States and A plus in Kuwait, same thing, okay? And there are testing worldwide. There is uh, actually online testing now. So you can do a cert certified test and actually do it in your home environment, which makes it a lot more convenient. And that's really what we're trying to prepare people for. So you can work your way through certifications, not get a bachelor's degree, and do really well. But the people that work with CompTIA are those types, okay? So if you've heard of Apple, or you've heard of Google, or you've heard of IBM, or Intel, or the Department of Defense, or the Navy, or these are all some of the little groups. But there are hundreds of partners that work with CompTIA to decide what they need for employees. When someone's coming to them with a job for a job, they need people that have some basic knowledge. They can teach you how they do it, but if you don't understand what an IP address is, you're probably not a very good network technician. So there are some basic things that we help you work through. And getting certified, you prove that you are worthy of talking to them. So, so we have A+, which is sort of the beginning great job for learning. If you like to do hands-on, you like to work with machines, you like to work the idea of working with the server hardware, making it all, changing out parts. Think of it as a mechanic for the computer. They deal with the hardware. Um, but in our day and time, we're moving to telephone systems being on servers. We're moving with security systems being on servers. So all of that has to talk and an A-plus technician may actually have to support some basic networking functions. So that's part of it too. But you can become a service data analyst. You can be a help desk tech, which 
you know, starting out, not so bad. You get paid pretty well. As long as you have some good people skills, you're good there. You could be just a tech specialist. You can be someone who goes out in the field and helps people at their job sites or in their homes. Um, there are companies all over this country that have technicians, they send out, they have clients, they go service their machines. They build machines for them, that type of thing. But that's what A-plus is for. CompTIA tells us the average is about 48,000 for someone starting out. And all of these numbers are certification only. Does, it means you've graduated high school and you have a certification. That's it. Doesn't mean you have an associate's. It doesn't mean that you have a bachelor's. It's just coming straight out, getting certified, going to work. So the next one, and this is, we're gonna cover the trifecta is what they call it, all right? The A plus network and security. So the one beyond that, because it carries a lot of the information from A plus is networking. So how do we make all these crazy little devices work? You know, when you get up in the morning and people addicted to their cell phones, First thing they do is look at it, right? See how many notifications we have? Well, how did all those notifications get there? While you were sleeping, you know, the hundreds of thousands of packets that went back and forth just to maintain status. Somebody had to implement the system that made that work. Somebody is taking care of that while you're asleep, okay? It's not all automated. <laughs> that is what you get into with networking. How do we make this giant wide area network that is the internet work? How do we make all of these little local area networks work? How do they talk? How do they get from here to there? Why is it that I can make a phone call over my cell phone using different apps like voice over IP based, like Discord, FaceTime, uh, Messenger with Facebook, all the, you know, you can call people, but it just works, right? So somebody had to make it. That's the idea. You can work on the infrastructure, you can troubleshoot. Again, these are companies that hire network plus technicians, okay? Junior network admins, network field techs. Again, there's always help desk. There's system engineers. There's IT consultants. There's network support specialists. There's all kinds of jobs available with network plus, okay? 57,000 a year, not bad with a high school degree and some certification, right? So, but <clears throat> why do we need this continual thing? Well, most people have heard the term IOT or Internet of Things, right? Why is that? Because everything talks. And funny thing happened a few years ago, they assigned all of our IP addresses there are no more available in version four. Most of the protocol used uses version IPv4, Internet Protocol version four. Well, that gave us 4.3 billion independent addresses. Seems like a lot. I mean, there's what, seven and a half billion people in the world, surely that's enough. Well, I checked my firewall this morning and I have 98 devices on my firewall at home. And every one of those has its own IP address and a MAC address. So what do we do? We create a new protocol. So we have version six. And I love this number. I had to write it out. We have 340 undecillion addresses available now using IPv6. It's that many, because that's a lot of zeros. I had to type it out just to keep it in perspective. But Remember, there's only seven and a half billion people in the world. So why do we need all that? Well, you got people like me who have ridiculous numbers of things talking to the internet because everybody's garage door needs to talk and your thermostat needs to talk and every TV has to talk and, right? So everything is network based. So people need to take care of it. Well, with all these things talking, we have bad people in the world, right? Unfortunately. So security, becomes an issue. So once you have mastered those things, you can get into the security area. Security Plus is their certification. Worrying about threats, vulnerabilities, holes, patches, we're constantly getting updates. When we're getting those updates, it's not usually because 
they're making it fancier and nicer for us, it's usually because they found a hole. They need to patch something that they didn't, that they missed, or the vulnerability when two things talk. Because you're making devices and different hardware and different software talk together, so we have to maintain that. Well, we have to protect ourselves and our, when we think how many billions of dollars or trillions of dollars we have in network hardware worldwide. Somebody needs to take care of that. The best part is you get paid more too. Now, Northrum Grumman, some of you may know who that is. They make a lot of defense stuff. They have a lot of interests worldwide, but uh, you know, they make cool airplanes too. Um, insurance, commissions, there's a couple insurance companies, but security administrators, security specialists, security engineers, system engineers, system and administrators, there's all kinds of jobs related to Security Plus. So, average salary, $72,000 a year. I have a friend who tells me that she can't imagine working for under six figures and she's Security Plus certified. She has a bachelor's degree and some, a few years of experience and she gets paid really well. So, that is, so what do we do with this? Why, why is this really necessary though? So let's just look. There's a couple of sites out there. This one shows us live attacks happening right now. Like as we are recording this video, this is live. Now, and you'll ask, how do I know this is really happening? Well, because we have all these servers. It's called the internet, right? And all of that traffic is being monitored by security companies. Those security companies then can report back the data and make pretty websites for us like this. I like this one because it's kind of fun. But if we go in and we can see right now, let's go up here. Let's go to Europe. Germany, no, that's the Netherlands. They are the 13th most attacked country at this moment in time. If we look. Russia is the number one most attacked country at this point in time. So all of these things, a lot of them are automated, but they're happening right now. While you sleep, while you eat, it doesn't matter, they're still happening. Let's take a quick look. Here's another one. This one, uh, this one monitors a little bit different activity. It actually looks at some of the launch sites for some of these attacks and analyzes botnets, which are just a collection of zone drones or zombies that are being used to maliciously do something. Okay, it's like throwing a zombie horde at your target. It's truly really what it is. Okay. But we can see launch sites for different live attacks. Looks like Egypt's not being very nice right now. So they're they're carrying 12% of our of our issues currently. So it changes every day. Okay? And it's always running. We are, we have a clock, tells us when this is monitored, when it's going to stop being monitored before they reset. Uh, yeah, stuff never stops. So, let's get back in here. But these are just a few of the sites where you can actually look at, at uh, some of these live maps as they happen. So, we, I talked in the beginning about how we have these focuses. One of the ones I especially enjoy is Linux. Well, Linux scares a lot of people. And as someone who's in IT, you can't be scared by Linux. Usually because there's so many versions of it. It's open source, so people don't necessarily always know what they're getting into. There is less security, it doesn't, come, it doesn't come all nice and shiny on our new machine, right? We can't just run down to Walmart or Best Buy and pick up a new, a new machine that has Linux on it. You should, but you can't, all right? Windows has cornered the market on that, so, and they've made billions off doing so. But if you have an iPhone, an Android device, you're using Linux. 
every phone currently marketed, except for, yeah, no? Windows Phone is totally gone, so you can't get one that's not Linux-based, okay? They use Linux systems to produce those. You have these little network switches, your router at home for you to plug in and get on the latest game, Linux-based software. 80% of the servers that control and run the internet are Linux-based. Uh, we focus on that because you, it's, it's a different environment. You don't always have a nice, friendly, pretty, gooey interface to point and click on. You may spend time on a dark screen typing in commands, and you need to understand how that works. So because of that, we need you to be comfortable. And there's actually a certification called Linux Plus, but having a background in that puts you so far ahead. If you can communicate and talk in the Linux languages, in the kernel-based language, it throws you way ahead. So that's why we spend a lot of time on it, okay? Now, at PCC, I'm very fortunate in the information network technology because we can support a lot of things. I have people, I have students at this moment that are here because they're professionals. And their employer has said, you need to have more experience, more background, so they send them to class with me, okay? Um, I have people who are working toward a bachelor's. They're here for two years, get their, get their education here, and then they're gonna move on. I have high school students that are working toward certifications. I have people who are just here to take IT classes so that they can get certified and start a new career, create their first career. And then I have people who are here for an associate's. They want that two-year degree, they want certifications, and they're going in the workforce, okay? So we can support all of those things, which is great. Now, the certification part is very important because there is not one study that I've seen that doesn't show that if you are certified in something, and this, even if you have a bachelor's or a master's or all kinds of education, you make more if you're certified. That certification will give you 22% higher pay just for being certified. Because it proves that you are, you can learn, you can be taught, that you are interested in continually learning. Because if I used what I learned 15 years ago I, and didn't keep up, I'd be out of date. So it is an industry that requires you to be interested and to continually learn. Now, in Kansas, if you are working in Kansas, this is what the, the, the state has given us. They say the average technician in Kansas earns up to 60,500 60, annually, okay? 10% of Kansas technicians earn 40,000 and then 10% earn over 80,000 annually. This is technician. So these are not the professional, the ones making the decisions. These are not your directors and people as you, as you get promoted. So, I love the idea of being able to be certified and work as some sort of maybe security technician and earning 80 grand. I think that sounds pretty good. First year in the program, I like them to get involved in the A plus classes. Uh, there are others that they can take alongside that, like programming or the game theory class, because that one is a lot of fun. But A plus for sure. The we spend time, the first class is all talking about hardware. Um, we start out doing a lot of learning terminology, talking about the differences between a hard drive, uh, what, what, when we're looking at the specs on a hard drive, what does it all mean? You know, that kind of thing. The motherboards, the hard drives, the network cards. And we have a, a room that is dedicated to dismantling and building computers. Um, they, you can take them apart and play with them and try and make them work. And that is part of the first year. You need to learn whether or not you are into the hardware part or you're into the software part. Now the second half of A+, because there are two exams to, to be certified in A+. The first one is hardware, all about hardware, and the second one is all about software. So you have to pass both to be certified. But 
the software, then you get into the, a lot of the networking. You get into a lot of dealing with different operating systems. We have to talk about even troubleshooting hard uh, phones and mobile devices and printers because printers fail all the time. So the first year, you, that's what I push them into. Uh, it's just a good place to get start and, and you need that foundation. Well, I just had one start a few weeks ago locally for as a bench tech. Um, he's working on computers and, and uh, he's actually still finishing his degree, but he is certified. He did pass his A plus certification and that helped him get, he walked in, handed in his resume and they said, you know, we need someone and they hired him. Okay, but it was, a lot of that was because he is A plus certified. We have, I have people who have gone on to WSU this year. I have people who have gone on to Fort Hayes and Emporia State. So they have spread out to continue their education or we have some that are just have gone to work. They need to be ready to, to learn. When you come in here, I had a student this semester that the first day of class, he actually stood up and looked around and goes, anybody as lost as I am? And that was, we were doing a really broad overview in network, and he's a freshman. Um, and I said, don't worry about it. It's the first day, this is an overview. I said, we are gonna get into this, and today we, I had him in class, and he's fine. You know, a few weeks later, it's just that there's so much to, to terminology and it's just a different mindset. So be ready for that. Um, don't think though that you're gonna come in, sit in class, and you're just gonna absorb it all. You do need to be willing to work and put some extra time in. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, we'll get you there. Uh, we are, the size of classes are great so that we do have a lot of interaction. We do have a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, small teams. So, it, it supports the idea of if you need a little extra here or there, we have time.